We're in the southern end of the San Francisco Bay Area, near the towns of Palo Alto and Menlo Park, in an area that was formerly used for industrial salt production. And most of the San Francisco Bay used to be ringed by a network of tidal marshes similar to this remnant marsh right here. But over time, most of those have been converted for uses like agriculture or development, or in this case, salt production. When wetlands are converted to other uses, the carbon that's stored in their soil is released into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. But restoring them has the potential to take that carbon dioxide back out of the atmosphere, which may have benefits to the global climate. As part of the Department of Energy, we at the Joint Genome Institute are interested in understanding the carbon cycling in the San Francisco Bay Area wetlands, specifically understanding the role that the microbes in the soils play in that carbon cycle. And so these two ponds here, there's one that's a historic wetland and one that was a former salt pond. And you can see that the natural wetland has all this vegetation that is taking up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and storing it, whereas a former salt pond really isn't serving that function anymore. Wetlands serve a number of important ecological functions. They're known as nature's kidneys because they filter pollutants out of the waterways. Additionally, they protect neighboring communities from increasing storm surges. We really care about wetlands because while they occupy only about 9% of total land surface area, they can store up to 35% of all terrestrial carbon. The goal of the JGI project is to better understand these sediment microbial communities, how they contribute to the global carbon cycle, in particular whether they are taking up or producing the greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, and methane. Methane is of particular concern because it is about 20 times as potent as carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas. In order to better understand the microbial communities in wetlands and the amount of greenhouse gases that they're responsible for both producing and consuming, we take intact soil cores at each of our different sampling sites. We then monitor the amount of CO2 or carbon dioxide and methane that's being produced in situ from these intact soil cores. We can then use those same exact soil cores and look at the DNA and the RNA of the microbes present in the below ground soils. By coupling genomics with carbon dioxide and methane measurements, we're able to link microbial communities with their greenhouse gas production. Additionally, all of our data is made public and is available to other researchers who are interested in studying microbial diversity and global greenhouse gas cycling.